What's going on guys? Got another quick building tips video for your Joe's CNC router. Uh, again, I'm specifically building the Joe's CNC Evolution machine. Uh, though I think the other machines use a similar setup, so this will probably apply there as well. Uh, but if like me, you're using angle iron for your V-rails, uh, this should be particularly helpful for you. And uh, it'll probably even apply to the precision ground rails as well uh, as the uh, stock that you bolt them to. Uh, I think a lot of guys use square stock or bar stock uh, to mount them to the extrusion with. Uh, that's going to have a little bit of warp or bend to it as well. Uh, so I guess you're going to have to line those up too. Uh, so this should be uh, helpful even for that method. But uh, when you go to put your gantry together and mount your uh, two pieces of angle in place, uh, it may be a little bit difficult to get everything perfectly straight and parallel at first. Uh, again, the angle is going to have some warp or some bend to it from the mill. Uh, there's really no avoiding that. Uh, fortunately, though, this extrusion is going to be very straight, uh, although there is going to be a little bit of slop uh, or wider tolerances for your bolts and your T-nut slots. Uh, as well as if, like me, you're drilling your holes a little bit oversized uh, to help in assembly as well. Uh, you're going to have some slop uh, left and right uh, of maybe 10 or 20 thousandths uh, at least. So uh, a quick way that I came up with to keep everything uh, halfway straight and parallel when it goes to uh, be tightened down. Uh, it's just this simple little gauge block here. And... Uh, you can make this uh, any number of ways uh, with a bandsaw, uh, even kind of cutting a dado out on a table saw. You know, aluminum cuts pretty easily. Uh, I've got a milling machine with a DRO, so I was able to uh, make this pretty quickly and accurately that way. Uh, but if you want a little bit of wiggle room or adjustment, uh, just cut out a rough slot and then drill and tap uh, for, say, a quarter inch bolt uh, on the short end here. And uh, then you can crank that in and out uh, to get your exact measurements uh, if you need to. Uh, but the dimensions on this one is just two and a half inches uh, from inside face to inside face. Uh, and that will fit like so uh, right over the outsides of this angle iron. And uh, I can position this at each set of screws or bolts here and get that uh, width exactly the same every time. Uh, if it's bowed out a little bit, this will suck it in. Uh, if it's bowed in uh, somehow, uh, you can pull it apart pretty easily by hand, or you can just go ahead and cut another gauge block uh, to sit in the middle and spread things out. And uh, really, if I'd have made this uh, piece just a little bit wider, you could easily use it for both. Uh, or just mill out kind of the male uh, version, you know, cut it in off here and mill out a little bit there, and then you can set it from that side. Uh, any number of ways of doing that, uh, but again, that lets you just go over where the screws go in and uh, get the exact width every time. And uh, then when you're done with one side, uh, you could pretty easily uh, do the underside as well. And uh, that should help you get everything matched up the first time uh, without a whole lot of fuss uh, while you're adjusting, you know, your V-bearings up here. Uh, and as far as that, uh, I just used a set of calipers to make the inside distances the same uh, on all four sides. And uh, that got me pretty close the first time. And uh, I've got a pretty smooth uh, travel already. Uh, without making too many major adjustments on my gantry carriage here. So uh, hopefully that'll help you guys out. Uh, now as for the x-axis, uh, they're just a single piece of angle, so it's a little bit easier uh, to adjust right off the bat. Uh, before you put these on, you can pretty quickly and easily uh, eyeball down these for straight, uh, or even set up a mason line or a string or use a long straight edge uh, or even just you know matching up 
this edge for flush uh, should get you really close. Uh, you can cinch one side down and then uh, use a tape measure. I got some loud neighbors. Uh, then you can use a tape measure to get the distance the same on the other side. Uh, and if you've even got problems after that, uh, just get everything mounted. Uh, keep this side tight, loosen the other one. And uh, you can kind of roll this down as you go along and uh, kind of let it find its own way uh, and tighten as you go. So just a couple quick tips on that. Uh, I know it's probably not the hardest thing in the world to figure out, but uh, hopefully this helps some of you guys who are getting started on your machines. Uh, or if you're having a little bit of trouble with binding or getting everything smoothed out. Uh, again, that's just a real quick and simple way uh, kind of make a little gauge there for yourselves and uh, get straightened out easily. So, again, hope that helps, guys. I'll uh, see you on the next one.